So good morning once again. Good to be here with you all. Uh, it's been an interesting morning for me. I came in my iPad um, somehow or other. Uh, I think my tennis shoe got up against my iPad in my bag and overnight it powered completely down. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to keep three pieces of paper in this little funky thing here. But it's all worked out. Thanks to uh, Amber Lee. She has everything all the time. She had a power connector for me, and we got it charged. So we're back. Good to have you back. All that to say, Happy Easter! No, I didn't miss a week. We are, it's just that we are still Easter people. It's the Easter season. In fact, we are always to be Easter people. Amen? And because we've gone deep into our faith and found Jesus and have been resurrected through Jesus Christ. Listen to what First Peter says about that. First Peter 3, blessed be the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So in short, happy Easter. <laughs> so we've been talking uh, about, uh, we've been talking about going deep for the entire uh, Lenten season. We talked about that and then came out on the far end of a uh, uh, beautiful Easter Sunday morning. So it was really nice. But we have, since we understand that, we have this living hope in Jesus Christ. But the question is, are we living into that hope? Are we actually growing stronger in our faith? You know, an athlete uh, disciplines themselves by digging into their exercise and, and doing and repeating over and over again the skills that they need to, to get better and better. A musician, like our musicians, they have a daily discipline of practice until the music becomes a part of who they are. And so I got to thinking about that. Why should we be anything different with our salvation? I have to be honest. I spent the first half of my life as a Christian thinking all I have to do is show up on Sunday, follow the rules they told me each week, which I never could. It was only when I started studying Scripture many years later that I realized that the studying the Scripture was putting me in touch with God in a new way. Well, today we start a new series. We want to continue to have a deep abiding relationship in, with Jesus Christ, right? Yes, we do? Yeah, all right, good. So the way we do that is to dig in. Dig in, Easter people. Let's pray. God, I thank you for being in this place. I thank you that for all the things that make it possible for us to be here, from air conditioners to iPads to your word. Help us to hear in a new and vibrant way what you would say to us. This place here is a place where we drop our guard down and listen for your voice. And I, even though you travel with us everywhere, you are with us no matter what. Help us today to see how we can strengthen that and to abide in you as you abide with us each and every day. May my words and our hearts together hear and live out what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, where do you get information from these days? My wife. My wife. <laughs> now, that's a new one. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, we all can turn to Barb DeLorme for our information from this point on, right? Barb, thanks for taking up the cross for us there. Anybody else, where do you get your information from? The internet. Anywhere else? The TV, right? Well, I have to tell you, my information process started when I was a kid. I was, uh, I was that first generation TV kid. In fact, I was telling him this morning, I realized this was about the size of our TV when I was a kid. It was black and white. The screen was about right here and it was kind of roundish. And, and I was that first generation. The television came on at 6 a.m. in the morning and went off after the national anthem, after the 11 o'clock news at night. And there were only 
three stations for most of my life. That was Channel 2, Channel 4, and Channel 11 out of Pittsburgh. And then we got Channel 13. But it was a PBS station, so <laughs> still only had three as far as I was concerned. But so, so that's kind of what I grew up with. And what I, to this day, have a problem with is that I get a lot of information from the news. I watch not only the 4 o'clock news and the 5 o'clock news and the 6 o'clock news, followed by the national news at 7 o'clock, which takes you back to Fox at 8 o'clock. I... I watch all those over and over. In fact, my wife just recently, after many, many years, started to take the clicker from me after two news cycles and said, we've already heard this. And I, I'm going through withdrawal about that, but I'm, I'm getting there. And so that's kind of what happens. But now we mostly turn to the internet, right? If you want to know something, how do you do it? You... Google it. That's right. Corey Bro was one of our students here many uh, several years ago. And we used to call Corey Google because he was so smart. He was just like Google. And we could go ask him and he knew the answer to pretty much anything. But, it, but the, just to show you how much Google has infiltrated our lives. But things have changed because of the internet and actually changed in, our, in all of our information venues. The more accessible information became the more influence, the more influence was placed on that information. More access caused more influence. Now, not only do we have a biased information, we also entered into a period where information is now being produced even by artificial intelligence or AI. Artificial intelligence was made and created with the goal to keep us online, to keep, to keep you in Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever media we like might find ourselves. And these are called bots. I'm pretty sure we had one just the other day answer uh, an ad for new preschool teachers for next year on our app because it started rambling on. And I just saw an article about AI. And sure enough, this thing was talking just like that article said, kind of randomly talking about different things, but coming back to the point and going. Uh, and the point is that these things were created to, to keep us online. And it's not their fault. That's what they were created to. Not to give accurate information, but to keep us online. The goal of social media is to keep us engaged. Amen? Truth or not. Information and truth, then, are becoming more at odds all the time. But before newspapers, before broadcast news, before the radio and the internet, and I was just thinking, that became the center of our life, that television, didn't it? You remember, it became the center of the living room, and now the center of our lives are our computers or our, our smartphones and everything like that. But before all of that, there was the Word of God. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes on in verse 2 to say, he was in the beginning with God. Now, in the midst of all the rancor and misinformation and hate speech and now artificial intelligence, it's time for us to seek out the truth. Second Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, reproof, and for correction and for training in righteousness. Doesn't that sound pretty good stuff? Doesn't that sound pretty important? Yeah, it is. That's why we need to dig into the Bible. Then, as Craig Groeschel says, we're not talking about the word of people. We're talking about the word of God. Because the word of people may inform us, but the word of God will transform us. The word of the people has all of the distractions of the world and we hear it all day long. It gives you everything the world has to offer in distractions. The world's information is filled with bias. The Word of God is filled with the Spirit. So which should we get more involved in? So let's take a look at truth. Look, look at Psalm 25.5. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. 
So that should be our, our prayer to God. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Our theological understanding as United Methodists is rooted in the Bible. In fact, our discipline says this, the Bible bears authentic testimony to God's self-disclosure in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, as well as in God's work of creation, in the pilgrimage of Israel, and in the Holy Spirit's ongoing activity in human history. You see, the Bible is the revelation of God. It is God revealing God's self to all of us. That's what the Bible is all about. And that revelation is all about the Word of God. In the Old Testament, then the fact that there's two creation stories, well, scientifically, that doesn't work. But it, that's okay because it's not about creation facts. It is about revealing God to us. And what we do know is this, that God spoke and the world was formed. Listen to Genesis 1-3. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God's word made the world. We don't know how. We, don't, we only know that God's word made the world as God's self-disclosure. Look who I am through this creation and who we are. And that sounds pretty powerful to me. That sounds like something that we probably want to know about. Amen? So, so the first part of the Bible in the Old Testament is all about that creative force and what's going on and what God is doing and how God, and, we, and the book is starting to open on how we understand God. And of course, the more we study it, the better it gets. In the New Testament, God is revealed in Christ, the Word made flesh, as we heard earlier in John 1. In John 14, verse 6, it says, I am the way, the and the light. Yeah, that's right. So, so God's word became truth and flesh. The truth walked among us. So the first part of, of our journey, we learn all about God and this creative work that God has done and created the world. And then the second half is, is God walks with us to bring us the truth in human form. And when Christ ascended, we are given access to the Spirit. 1 John 4 says, by 13 says, By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us His Spirit. The Spirit of God then guides us in the Word of God today. And so by the Spirit, the Bible is a living Word of God. I always say that. When I talk about the Bible, the next thing you know is coming out of my mouth is that it is the living Word. Jesus said, if you continue in my Word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The truth will make us free if we stay rooted in that Bible. Unfortunately, the Word of the people can bring bias to the Bible when they start to decide the truth for us, when somebody starts to tell you what the Bible says is not the same thing as the Spirit leading you as you read the Bible. Amen? You see the difference? So digging into the Bible must be a God-breathed activity. We do that with the Spirit. It's not the printed Word. It's the Spirit in the Word, in the moment. Studying the Bible is more than just reading. It's a discipline of bringing the Spirit into our study. When you read, you have to listen. Maybe not with your ears, but with your heart. What is God saying to me right here, right now? That's what the Word of God can do for all of us. And I have to admit... I've become a little bit of a Bible nerd because I love what God does with the Word of God in my life and in the lives of everyone that I serve. You see, every Monday morning I come in, my knees are knocking and I'm thinking, what am I going to say this week? And I open up the scripture and I start and God just pours into me. That's the spirit and the scripture working together. So it's time for us to dig in. And right starting May 3rd, Bev McGregor and I are going to offer a class called How to Read the Bible. There's so much to dig out of God's Word 
directed by the Spirit. And we're going to spend probably six to eight weeks learning more ways to let God speak to us through the Word. We're going to do that in room 13 at 6 p.m. We'll probably be done by 7.30 at the latest each week. And, and, and we're going to study on Wednesday nights, 6 to 6, 7.30, 6 to 8 weeks. And we're going to talk about the, the way the Scripture speaks to the moment or condition we are in. And this study is a way to let God go deeper into us and into our lives. And this is where my Bible nerd stuff comes out. I absolutely get excited. You hear me mention those Greek words all the time and all that that goes on. It's so exciting. Not because I had this wonderful knowledge in my head, but because God opened this up that previous week. And if you think I'm wrong, ask me about a sermon from three weeks ago. Because anybody will tell you, I can't remember what I said three weeks ago. Because it was God's word, not my word, that made it happen. And if you'd like to be... Uh, a part of this study. This is all you need to do. I said you can sign out, uh, sign up in the lobby, but I forgot to put a sign up out there. So you can tell me that you're going to be there so we know if room 13 is going to fit. And, or you can go online. If you're online right now, I, I want to make this available to you also. So if you're interested, just email me at tnelson at firstchurchpo.org or any of you can email me as well since I don't have the sign up paper. And we'll make sure that we our meeting. And that way, if I have your email address, we have to move somewhere because of the size of the class, we'll do that. But that's what we can do. So we can do it online if you want, or if you can be here with us, I know it's going to be worth it. Regardless, regardless of whether you decide to take this course and we're creating it as we speak, actually, Bev, in case it doesn't work wherever you are, I'm creating it, and she's, she's reading a great book by Gordon Fee that's going to help out as part of that as well. But I pray, even if you don't take it, that you start deciding to dig more into the Bible, to dig the Bible more. The Word of God is living and active. For me this week, for instance, in preparation of, for the, the, I, this sermon today, the idea hit me about this word that, and I know we've done this over and over again. Maybe this comes to you the way it did, but just the whole idea that the Old Testament, that God spoke, and then God sent Jesus in the New Testament, and then God sent the Spirit. It's all about the word. The word God spoke and created. God became flesh. The word made flesh. God put that word and spirit together in our hearts to make a difference. Isn't that kind of cool the way that just falls into place? That's what we're talking about. So whether you take it or not, get into the word of God more. That's what I think is important. There's no greater truth than the word of God. Let me say that again. There is no greater truth than the Word of God. Amen? God revealed in the midst of this day, with all its highs and lows, that is richer when we let God and God's Word into our lives and speak to us. So let's gather with friends or a friend like and study together. I'm so proud of our Sunday schools that do this week after week, but I want to give you an opportunity to reach out to others and do that as well. We need to make time in our daily routine to read Scripture. How many people know about what time they're going to have breakfast tomorrow? Raise your hand. Okay, how about lunch tomorrow? You got a pretty good idea. Dinner tomorrow? Good, good chance? Yeah. When are you going to read Scripture? Yeah, that's, that's what we need to make sure that we're doing is to build it into our, our day. I, I have a time to ride my bike every day too, and that's kept me healthy. And what's going to keep us spiritually healthy is to start reading that Bible. Just, and you don't have to be, you don't have to know anything. You just have to know that God's in the midst of it. It's like communion. We don't know how this works. God works that out for us. And when we start reading the Bible, I promise you, if you let that Spirit speak to you, not the words you've heard from other people or anything else, but the Spirit speak to you, you're going to be transformed in some way or shape or other. Isn't that powerful? And Bibles are pretty easy to find. In fact, if you look under almost any seat here, you can find one. So, so understand that the Word of God is there for us. Imagine if we took the time we spend seeking information 
every day and instead gave our time to the revelation of the one who created this world. Seems to make sense to me. And the best part is, the more you dig it, the more you dig into the word of God, the more exciting and rich it becomes. Yes, you too can be a Bible nerd like me. <laughs> and is it the more we dig into the word, the more God will reveal. So as Timothy 2.15 says, make an effort to present yourself to God as a tried and true worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, but as one who interprets the message of truth correctly. Don't we all need to do that? God will work with us and do that every day of our lives. Our confirmands are learning about the United Methodist Church. There's fact, here's one of them sitting right up front here. They're learning, and they're going to learn a little more about how Scripture this week, or next week, they'll be learning how Scripture is considered the primary source and standard for Christian doctrine. This week, the thought came to me. Scripture, the revelation of God, the truth should be our primary source and standard for all our information. Amen? Amen? And then, as verse 32 said earlier, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And then we truly will live as Easter people. Amen? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll see you out there if you want to join the class. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we worship together.